It is now my great pleasure to introduce you all to Dr Liana Reid, South Australia's Chief Scientist, for the official opening of the conference. Please make her feel welcome. Thank you, Jessica. So it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Minister Ma. And I'd also like to acknowledge we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Ghana people and we respect their elders past and present. And uh, Uncle Lewis, you're as entertaining as ever. Uh, always a pleasure to, to listen to you. And great messages there for citizen science, for sure. And may I also welcome all of our guests here to Adelaide, to our beautiful city, uh, particularly our international visitors, uh, to this exciting conference. It's always exciting when a conference uh, concept first comes together, this being the only the second one. There's, there's a real feeling of something new and new opportunities, and I really think that is the case here and a very important one. Um, from, from the South Australian government perspective, uh, this conference meets at the crossroads of two very important priorities for the state. Firstly, involving citizens much more in uh, decisions that uh, affect the state and government decisions. I think our state government has had a, a long history of this. Uh, use of citizens' juries, for example, sometimes for better or worse, but you know, it's bringing in, in the, the people. Uh, open State, a very successful series of events that we've been holding now for a couple of years, uh, which have inputs from all sorts of people, um, including into science, but all sorts of areas, and really trying to address the big issues that are affecting us uh, as, a, as a state or indeed uh, globally. The second priority is to utilise science and technology to transform the economy uh, of this state, and it is very essential it does that. We're coming out of that old economy, and science and technology is crucial uh, for the future, at, while bringing along uh, the well-being of all of our citizens as well. And there's a whole lot of examples. You're, you're in one of them, this uh, biomedical precinct, which is, it started life, I guess, uh, well, the UniSA was in this area for a long time. And then uh, we built uh, Sambury here, which we affectionately call the cheese grater. And, and that really has been iconic uh, as a building. It's a, a fantastic building, a fantastic research facility, and has really fired up the whole development of this precinct. It's up to us now to really utilise this for our economic benefit, along with the new hospital. And we have other precincts too, such as Tonsley for advanced manufacturing and Tech Park out north in renewable energies. And I think these are, uh, the importance of these precincts is not their, their bricks and mortar, but bringing of the people together uh, in ways that will actually create effective precincts. Uh, another example is the smart use of the internet. Um, a lot of work going on there in, in Adelaide. Smart city concept, Cisco's first lighthouse city uh, coming, coming together. Uh, Gig city, so the first... Uh, in the southern hemisphere to have uh, gigabit um, speeds up to 100 times that of the national average by connecting using Sabernet all of the different research university facilities and making it available to other entities including business. Of course we're having a, a, a new industries coming along. Uh, the Space Congress here was extremely successful uh, and I, we hope is underpinning a development. There's a lot of work going into the potential for new space industry opportunities in South Australia in conjunction with the rest of the country. Renewable energies, of course, some call us, us the canary in the mine, but uh, I think everyone's now facing that issue. Uh, and provided we do it right and guarantee a supply, uh, a security of supply, uh, I think we really are ahead of the pack. And the green, potential for the state to be involved in the green hydrogen economy really excites me. And citizen science brings these two together so beautifully. Um, you'll see from the conference we're very active in this area from monitoring we've done forever in koalas, um, the, the, the monitoring of, of pet cats and, and, the, and the weird places that they travel at night when you swear that your cat never leaves the house and so forth. A whole range of uh, ecology, the importance of that to ecology, the environment and so forth. Um, also in, 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 in this area in South Australia, we, we were the founders of RI Oz and uh, the Australian Science Media Centre, uh, which are now national entities but located, headquartered here. Very important initiatives, I think, to bring the public into science and vice versa, uh, and including the media, who unfortunately, of course, have decreased a lot the numbers of people who are science uh, literate. Um, 
No, but, it, but if you cross over between entertainment and science, science at the fringe, for example, our fringe event, uh, the, it's a great cultural city, and the fringe event is coming up for a month, and we have about uh, 40 or plus events which are very strong, with a very strong science focus in there. And if you go to the Inspiring SA website, um, which uh, has been put together, uh, Sharon uh, Pittman is here from the uh, head of uh, Inspiring South Australia, you will see a list of those specifically pulled out so you can look at the interaction between uh, science and the cultural arts. So the concept I said of bringing science together with the wider community is extremely welcome uh, to, to, to us in, in the state, the government and, and I think Australia in general. But from a broader perspective I would say also it's important that we realise and, and embrace the fact that science is no longer an individual effort. We used to you know, think of science as the, the buffin in the lab with a, you know, working on their own uh, or uh, someone in philosophy sitting in, a, lab, uh, in a, a, a desk on their own. It's not that anymore. It's much more collaborative, cross-disciplinary, and the extension of that is to really bring science into uh, the place of the citizen and bring the citizen to the science. There's also a need and the importance of citizen science that I see is to build trust on both sides. And that goes two ways. So scientists probably dismiss citizens, you know, how they wouldn't know what they're talking about a bit too much, where citizens have a lot to offer. Uh, and the other way around, the education perspective there that we can bring people in to understand things so that we don't repeat the debacle of GM foods where the science says there's really nothing wrong with it, but, but if you try and ask a politician to bring in and approve a GM food, good luck, uh, because we let the science go ahead of public opinion and input. So the more we can put science input into that, into that process, we are going to be so much better off. And then there's the education of our children. How can we get more children to go and to do, to do STEM? You know, something like 3% of year 10s say that they want to do anything to do with information technology as a career. And you sort of think, what? You know, when you look around the career opportunities. So citizens being more involved in science, more understanding of what it involves, uh, more with their own uh, interests themselves, is going to have the repercussions that's enormous. Um, and I hope ultimately then we'll make sure that at a government level, I'll give this feedback to our minister, we'll make sure that they see priorities in that in developing science for the benefits of the economy and for the whole nation. So I wish you well for this conference. It's my great pleasure to formally open the second Australian Citizen Science Conference. And I wish you, and I know you will have an extremely stimulating two days. Thank you. Dr. Liana Reid, thank you.